here a little bit. So on the towel drill, do you want to work on keeping the front foot 90 degrees? Yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're here in that throwing position, you want that foot closed. But obviously that foot can't stay closed forever because you're going to break a leg trying to do that. But naturally, and this is just going to happen, with the extension, you're going to rotate. That foot is going to automatically rotate. And I mean, it's not going to open. You can see my foot. It's not going to open like that, but it's going to be kind of like that. If closed is, closed is here, it be pro probably there. You're not going to be way over here. So that means, again, he's coming side to side. Or one thing a lot of people do, they land on their heel. Okay? When you land, you want to land solid. <coughs> You guys probably have your kids or your students or you guys played other sports where in basketball position you want the balls of your feet and kind of guarding same thing when you're pitching it's an athletic move where you're landing and you're landing on the ball of your feet if you land on your heel you're gonna spin so make sure you land on the ball of your feet release point our top arm slot everybody's got different arm slots I don't care I throw from here. Some guys throw from here. Some guys throw from here. Kids, it doesn't matter as long as everyone has a natural slot. It just I always had I always had this slot. I could never throw over the top. I can't throw 12-6. I throw a little more of a slur. Just always been my natural slot. You don't really want to change their natural slot, but you want to make sure if they're in that slot, there's some key points. When you're here and you come through, I said this is perfect motion. Now it doesn't matter if it's here when you throw, up here a little bit, even here. I wouldn't recommend a kid throwing from there at a young age because usually the only reason they do this for guys is left-handed specialist. They don't throw hard from up here and they need to get some funky movement. So usually they don't do this to guys until late in their career. Remember with Josh Ellis, they did that. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it. Try to get their elbow above their shoulder because at those ages not fully developed and they'll probably blow something out because they won't throw it correctly. They'll throw all elbow or they'll throw all shoulder and then you're going to have a kid, you know a lot of kids these days are having Tommy John at 14. So what you want to do is when you're here again elbows even with the shoulder they're here that's okay but all I want to make sure is this hand is here to here. So you got the back of your hand, you're on top of the ball when you release it. So when I release the ball here, we're all in the same spot. If I come from here, same spot. Here, same spot. Guys that are down here even, same spot. That release point always has to look the same. Again, it's gonna be hard to see with the naked eye, but if you guys have uh, like coach's eye on your iPad, or you have somebody like, I can pick it up just cause I've seen it a lot seen a lot of guys throw and if you can pick it up great make sure their slots here everything else is still the same this is here as you pulled through chest is coming down release point is the same and they're on top of the ball when they release it whether it's from here or from here on top of the ball when you release it what gets in trouble is if they have a little sidearm like me and they come here they try to throw it from here on top of the ball that's the difference well, hey, uh, so here's what we'll do. Um, and again, we're just, we gotta be sensitive of time ourselves. We've got a, a camp's coming up this afternoon. Uh, but we can go a little bit over. Basically what I think we'll do real quick, since we covered the mechanics and, and, and a walkthrough, uh, I just wanna open the floor for a few questions. And, and I know uh, as we experience and coaches coming in and, and talking and, and kids, um, you know, you have certain kids with certain mechanics you just can't fix or certain tendencies you guys see at that level. So I kind of want to open it up, uh, just a quick Q&A mechanics-wise, uh, and then we'll get on to some of the other discussion points. So, so if anyone has anything they want to ask about uh, anything uh, with mechanics, feel free. I see a lot of boys aiming the ball. They're so concerned about throwing strikes, you know, they're shot footing the ball, they're aiming yep. the ball, you know, to get them to get that full, full range of motion <clears throat> in their arm. Any, any suggestions on how to, how to get that they can get the aiming out of them? Yeah. We all have a tendency, I even have a tendency still in my career to aim. It's a fear. It's a fear, to, like a thing in your mind where it's telling you, I really need to make this perfect pitch or this guy's going to crush it. That's really what it comes down to because 
you think you have to, you see Greg Maddox, and he's the type of pitcher where you watch him like, oh, oh, man, that guy doesn't miss a spot. But you also watch a lot of guys like John Papelbon, for instance. He'll throw the ball right down the middle, and guys won't hit it. So what you really want to make sure is that they're not, tell them, if you throw the ball with aggression and don't aim it, usually two things happen. When you aim, you get tight. Okay? So when I was talking about kids tight enough to try to throw hard, sometimes they do it to try to aim the ball. They're not loose. And again, you can't control tight muscles as much because everything's stiff. Again, make sure they're relaxed. Again, the fear thing is a mental side of the game. We could get into that for probably another hour. But uh, you just, I mean, from one, I would tell them the confidence, if you throw the ball with conviction, so if you believe in it, most likely you're going to get a good outcome. I'm telling you, you can throw a ball right down the middle and they'll still ground out, especially at the lower levels. Big leagues, yeah, they'll probably hit it. They'll probably hit a home run off you pretty on a pretty good average, but they're still going to miss it and hit ground ball. And that's at the major league level. So what the thing I would do mechanically for them is the breathing technique. Just make sure their shoulders are relaxed. Everything's loose. I like to tell them like loosey goosey or loose like a noodle. Just through their whole motion, try to get them to like just be loose with that arm. Don't swing it a couple times, just like, hey, just sit here and swing your arm. Because what's happening when they aim the ball, they're like they're timid and they're probably kind of coming together like this and they're getting the elbow out and they're not getting to that extension point and they'll start missing. They'll just start spraying the ball everywhere and even though they're trying to aim, they can't do it. Right. Okay. Does that help a little bit? Yes, yeah, thanks. So one problem I notice is a lot of Kids are thrown with a very stiff wrist. Mm -hmm. So how do you get, is there a way to get them to, I mean, other than just kind of the losing Well, do you have a ball on them by chance? Okay. And how much, basically how much wrist do you want? Kind of well, I mean, it depends what you're doing. When I throw my break the ball, I snap my wrist. I mean, again, teaching curve balls to kids, it all depends on the age. No, just in, in just a, on a fastball. Just on four or two seam fastball. So you're saying when they come through, there's no snap there, on it? There's no snap. But what's happening probably, which would be my guess, I would have to see, but most likely, is if I have this ball and I hold it, let's say hold it like an egg, like hold it loosely like an egg, see how my wrist is loose even though I'm holding on to the ball? What kids do is they grab it and they really close in. They like grip it as hard as they can. Now look at my arm. Because my fingers, yes. Because, my, because I'm gripping it so hard, all these muscles in my forearm are tightened up and now I can't move my wrist. And that's what kids do, because they're just like, I'm going to grip it and rip it. Grip it and rip it is what they're thinking. What you want to do is you want to just get the ball, get it in their hand, like, hey, I should be able to do this. You should be able to take the ball out of your hand, hold it, hold it lightly. And then by them holding it lightly, like, I have, I have perfect control of this ball, but you can just like that if you wanted. And now, when you do that, it's loose. If you're tight and I can't get the ball out of your hand, that means their wrist is locked. So just a little drill for them is like, hey, let me see the ball. If you can't get it out of their hand, it means they're gripping it too tight. And that's probably the reason why they can't get that snap on it. Because your, your thumb is straight under? Yeah. The, I mean, or off to the side like I hold mine like that. If you, if you put it off to the side, it's going to be more of a sinker. This is more of like a true fastball. You start moving that up. So you're going to take one power away and control. So now like this is more like a change up fastball and like change. So as you move it around, that's what's going to happen. So like if you have a kid that's thrown like this and you can't control the ball, move it on the knee. I mean, another thing they tend to do is they'll get their fingers across the seam, but the fingertips are going to be on the smooth part, so they're not getting any of The grip. Yeah, I mean, like when I hold mine, mine's on the smooth part, but that's just preference. Again, like I said, if I, if I was teaching young kids, I would teach them two-seamer. It moves a lot more. Teach them a four seamer, try to get them used to throwing a straight ball. And then when they start getting better with their accuracy and getting their mechanics, start teaching them things that move, and then they can start to try to control those things. What are your thoughts? I, I was just going to say, with the, with the grip and over gripping, one of the things I've found is it's the egg drill. You should be able to hold it hard enough where I'm not going to be able to just smack it out of your hand. But if you have them actually hold an egg and throw it, if they try and throw an egg, truly an egg, you can't grip it too hard. Yeah. Grip too hard, it explodes in your hand. That's what I'm saying, like holding it like an egg. Like an egg, you yeah. can literally, because if they grip it too hard, like you're saying, it it is it a crush, and they'll have egg all on their hand. That is, yeah. I've never I've never done that personally, but that's a it's that's it's a great work. drill. The only the only thing is is if you have it 
top to bottom, it's, it's really actually very hard to crush. Um, oh, so yeah, if you do it side probably. to side, it's much easier to crush an egg from side to side. So if you do it side to side and have them throw it, you'll start seeing about, uh, you'll, you start picking up a whole lot. And one of the things he said a bunch is this idea of a whip. It's all about fluidity. And the more that you, you, you break it up, and if you, if you have a whip that's got a, a, a stiff part in it, you don't get nearly as much fluidity and, and, and acceleration, velocity, all that stuff out of it. So if you have them try and throw an egg sideways, you'll be able to find out if there's anything stiff in there. Because if it's smooth, it'll come out and they'll be able to throw it. And that, that's not. a good point because he's talking about that whip. You could do everything perfect in your whole mechanics, and then if you're gripping that ball too tight, you've just wasted all those good mechanics because of that last little problem. And that's why pitching is so <coughs> complicated. You had a question? Yeah, I, I know we talked about the head a little bit, but in terms of like picking up the target and kind of focusing on the target, what are you? What are your thoughts on that? Now, um, kids kind of look down at their hands. Yeah. Kind of all over the like place. I said, like a lot of guys use a mechanism to kind of start over. They'll start with their heads down, and then when they're ready, they'll look up. But once you look up and you catch that catcher's glove, obviously catchers at the higher level they set up later. But like that's not really going to be a problem because you're still throwing to a spot you want to throw to. You focus on where you want to throw. You make sure that head stays still. So, if I went through the whole wind up here. I mean, you didn't see my head move almost at all, and that's the key. Your body's moving, but your head's not moving, because with the head goes the body. And that's why I try to tell my kids all the time, like, if you move like this, there goes the head, the body follows. You move like this, there goes the head. You go like this, there goes the head, and the body follows. That It's almost here the whole time, and then the only time it comes forward when you release, and then when you get rid of it, you start moving through. But that head should stay still. And the eye should stay on the target the whole time. Cool. Yeah, when, you, when you introduce a uh, change up or you know, you know, the curve they're talking about slowly down, when do you introduce a change up to work? Immediately? Immediately? Yeah. The change up, all it is is a grip difference. You have a fastball and then you just move it over on your hand to your left, like pointer finger and middle finger, power, thumb, power. Ring finger and pinky, no power. It's not where your power comes from. So the more you move it over, the harder it's going to be con to control. Arm speed stays the same, but since there's no power in those fingers, the, the velocity is less. So it looks like a fastball because your arm speed sells it, but it's off those fingers, so you're not getting the velocity on it. And there's not going to be any hurt to your elbow. You're not snapping it. You're not getting here and snapping a curveball off. So I would, you could teach a kid a changeup as soon as they start throwing a fastball, if they can handle it. I mean, obviously you want to start small, see if they can handle a fastball. I'm like, hey, let's start doing a changeup. And just throw that changeup, throw a couple fastballs, and hey, throw the changeup. Same speed. Just all, you, honestly, if you want to teach them, teach them a fastball and be like, fastball number two, and move it over. That way they don't think changeup, they think fastball with a different grip, and it would be slower. Because sometimes it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta throw a changeup that's slower, and they'll slow their arm speed down, thinking they gotta throw it slower. No, you want the same arm speed, you just want to move it over in the hand. Any other suggestion that I've always heard? Because I, I never, I pitched in college, and, and I had a fastball and a curveball. I never learned my changeup. I wish I had. But mm -hmm. I learned my, my curveball because I would just, whenever I was playing around, I'd throw it all the time. And I learned it at eight years old. I mean, it was kind of, you know, I don't suggest that, but. <laughs> Um, it, I wish I, I had learned how to throw a changeup. And throughout college, I tried to throw a changeup, and I just never could learn it. If you start them early and just say, grip it differently when you're playing catch, just try different grips. The part of pitching, and the reason why you get pitchers or pitchers, is because they can hit something. I mean, it's, it's a lot of this, you kind of over, you, sometimes you get kids that overthink a lot. You have people who are going to be great pitchers, they can hit a spot. You say, hit that, and if they don't think, they'll hit it. But once they start thinking, yeah. they can't. And so we're trying to get them to, to have these mechanics so they don't have to think as much and work through it that they can just You just got to get them to trust the mechanics and they'll stop forgetting about the mechanics and they'll just be like, I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. All right, throw the ball there. But the mechanics are sound, but they don't think about the mechanics anywhere because they trust them. And a good point that I, I learned from a guy, it's a great, you see what they're doing wrong, have them throw a couple, correct it, have them throw a couple the corrected way, then tell them to go back their old way. So when they go back to that old way, they feel the difference. And it works every time. And it worked on me when I was in pro ball, and it works on the kids from any ages. 
when they throw it the right way, they're like, oh, yeah, that feels better. But they, it's still in their mind they don't trust it. They're like, yeah, this guy's telling me. He probably knows what he's talking about, but whatever, I, you know. So, but when they go back, they're like, all right, go back to your old way. They start throwing it. They're like, oh, man, that, that doesn't feel as good. And they tr now they're like, this, okay, that way works better. I'm going to stick with it. That trust is a big difference because now they're not thinking about the mechanics. They're thinking about how much better they can do now. And they trust that they can do better because of what they just learned. They believe in it now. And that's, that's probably a big thing in coaching because you have to prove to them that their old way wasn't the good way or wasn't better for them. So that's kind of, and, and so we'll move along from that. And again, some of you that work with us and you'll hear me say over and over that if, if you can feel a difference and if you can make a kid feel a difference, whether it's by visual, whether it's by feel, you can get a kid to feel a difference and that's when we can make changes. So that's, what we, that's anything we can do to make them feel that difference. The, the, sorry to interrupt, but the greats like, Tom Glavin and uh, Pedro Martinez, they can throw a bullpen with their eyes closed, all by feel. It's amazing. I don't know how they do it. Just practice and feel. But that's how good they are. So. Uh, well, let's do this. So, so this next section, and you have a seat, man, if you want. And, and uh, so we got about 15. Like I said, we'll go a little bit longer if that's all right with everybody. Uh, but just in the, you know, we'll think about time as we kind of move along. So we have some discussion tape. Yeah, you know. Uh, uh, so a few discussion questions we have out there, um, you know, so basically with Neeson and, and like saying with Pedro and, and those guys, it's about repetition and doing it over and over, but it's also about the back end stuff that nobody thinks about, about preparing your body, how to prep for a game, how to take care of your arm after. Uh, and if I didn't mention it, so, so Eric was in Florida yesterday, he got a call from the Orioles. So hopefully he'll be with us, hopefully this, this coming year. So he, he had a workout yesterday with uh, the Orioles scout and through, um, so he's currently in the process. His first thing he said on the phone is, we gotta find a gym. You gotta get me in a gym because he's gotta get his body back for the next call that comes. Um, so I think it's really important at a, at a youth level to make sure we hit on what exactly we can do, uh, you guys can do as coaches with your kids uh, to get them, get them prepped and also to get them uh, going. So we'll just kind of step along these questions. I think with this, we'll keep it informal. So again, feel free to, free to plug in. Um, 